G'day and welcome to the second iteration of Do Your Daily Tasks. Today we're going to take a closer look at some of the most common daily tasks that are done in Gilanor and some extensions to those tasks that you may not have thought of before. Like the video if you enjoyed, comment down below what your daily tasks are and subscribe if you're new. Now in the last iteration of this video, I recommended collecting your dynamite from Theris once per day. This can easily be a free 50k per day if you've done the Elite Diary. And of course, who can forget about the starves? That was the number one comment from the last video. Everyone at least does their starves. You make about 1k profit per staff purchase, so 120k from the Elite Diary. But have you considered turning those starves into air battle starves? Even just one run of say 26 unpowered orbs which are worth as we see just over 2k you can teleport using a padawa teleport tablet or by teleporting to edgeville and running through the dungeon but making it to the obelisk of air where you can charge those orbs with a small investment of three cosmic runes each increasing their worth from 80 gp up to over 1200 gp each which I guess you could sell on their own, or you could add them to the starves for passive crafting XP. So we can see that the initial investment of that one run through Edgeville Dungeon will cost you just over 9k. The starves you get from Zaf have an added 1k of value, but they have an added 2k of value once you turn them into the air battle starves. In addition, you're getting passive magic and crafting XP. But wait, there's more. If you finish the Lumbridge Diary, you will have access to the Explorer's Ring, which grants free high alchemy per day. 30 free high alks without runes in the case of the Lumbridge Elite Diary. And we see that those air battle stars, the 26 of them for one run, have a value of 9k each. But when we cast high level alchemy, they are 9.3k each. How good! There's no cost associated with the free Alks, so this is pure profit, baby. If you're going to stand there and do the Alks as well, you may as well run a lap of your favorite agility course while doing so and get some passive agility XP while you do your daily Alks. The great part is, it's all up to you about how efficient you want to be. And I can't believe I hit lap 420 on making this clip. And many people were very quick to point out Nightmare Zone herb boxes. I didn't do them. Since you have to teleport to your Neil anyway, why don't you harvest your Nillian hops from the patch that's right next to the teleport? Not only will you get passive income from the herb boxes, but these hops, given that they are used to protect mahogany trees on Fossil Island, which are great for farming XP, these are worth about 900 GP each. And from there, you can quickly run over to Nightmare Zone and get your 15 herb boxes for the day. The Chaos Altar is a true emotional roller coaster. My chat box here indicates that. Are you sick and tired of offering bones to the altar? Feeling like you're safe? And before you know it, you're back here? Ah! Maybe add this to your daily tasks and you'll spend less time getting PK'd and more time doing the things you love. With the Mauritania Diaries, you can trade in bones for bone meal and buckets of slime, eliminating the tedious task of getting both of these items, taking them straight up to the Ectophuntus, and gaining that sweet, sweet prayer XP without any PKers in sight. Add this to your daily tasks, and you'll be at your prayer goals before you know it. Now the final daily tasks here may seem obvious, and in fact they are kind of things that are built around doing a daily task or a time task, but that is the herb run and the birdhouse run. Some people get a bit disenchanted with farming. The herbs and the allotments reset at different times to the trees, to the fruit trees, to the bushes, to the hops, to the everything. You've got special patches as well you should keep up with, you've got mahogany trees, you've got redwood trees, you've got the whole lot. And it can get a bit overwhelming, people get sick of it and people just stop altogether. Instead, very passively, you can train both skills, farming and hunter. Just do one a day. If you're fully invested in your farming, then that's awesome. It's, uh, you know, I was addicted at one point too. That's how I got my farming cape. But after a while, I just said, you know what? Herb run a day, you make good coin. Especially once you do have a higher farming. A single herb run can profit you hundreds of K. As you see, it does for me here. Ignore the rest of my Grand Exchange history. <laughs> I was doing creature creation. But 300k from one herb run, and the yield does vary. So sometimes you get less, sometimes you get more. And the wiki actually has a tool that lets you calculate for your stats and your diary completions the most profitable herb run for you. So go and check that out. Birdhouses as well, yes, can be annoying. 
literally do it once. Once per day, every bird nest is between 4 and 5k or more if the price fluctuates. Here it varies as well, but a good little free bit of coin each day as well. And all it costs you is some logs and seeds. Even for me doing the magic birdhouse runs, the magic logs are outweighed by getting a single bird nest on that run. So add this to your daily tasks. And of course, passively doing the birdhouse runs gives you these bird's eggs and a chance at the coveted evil chicken outfit from the shrine in the woodcutting guild. But you either way, you get some more bird nests, so more cash. And a little bit of prayer XP as well. Stay away from those pesky PKers. Can we get lucky with our eggs that I had here? No. If you've learnt anything from the video, if you're going to add any of these to your daily tasks, let me know down below, leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe. Cheers!